done marbles for quite a while because because of the pressures of this thing that people kept putting on us. And um, and I don't think that's the case anymore. I think discovering that we actually have um, there was a real kind of a, a, quite, a quite a big watershed for us was doing this Tibet Freedom Festival. It suddenly felt like that we actually had some sort of, like we weren't having to justify, all five of us have, having to justify ourselves all the time to everybody and everything. I mean, I know that sounds sort of over the top, but with the Benz, it was sort of, I don't think we quite realized how far we'd got with the Benz and how much, how much um, of a positive, vibe we got from people after, because we were away doing this yeah and then when we came back and when we did the tibet thing and all our peers were there and everyone was sort of getting on and there weren't any egos and and i think all five of us i mean i know i did all five, five of us actually felt some degree of acceptance which actually is extremely important to us as individuals yeah it's also free isn't it yeah yeah because it's like it's like, oh, okay, so, you know, we don't have to choose our words carefully all the time. We don't have to do this and this and this. We don't, we can just be in the five group of people making yeah, yeah. music and that's it. Especially coming from England, because there's this whole pressure of like English groups outwardly to have this kind of like aesthetic and manifesto a lot of the time, like people like Blur and Pulp, and um, you know, just to have this kind of. We were told when we were signed, one of these A and R men said to us, you know, you got to have you got to have your soapbox to stand on that says like we're really this or that. You know, we believe we wear this certain kind of. Clothes. We did actually sat down and tried to write one, didn't we? Once? Uh, did you? Yeah. Why is it? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't go anywhere. It was an abject <laughs> failure. Okay. Mm. I think, I think the only thing we ever like reiterate in interviews is the fact that we don't live in London, we live in Oxford. Yes. It's kind of like an anti-manifesto, it's the fact that we don't, we're not on the centre of things, we try and stay in the periphery, you know, just one step removed from, from the, the, the beating heart. No, the coke sentence, freaks. That, that, <laughs> yes. that one step removed from the coke it's, freaks. Yeah. I've read something briefly about uh, somebody working with DJ Shadow. There you are. Yeah, just did that two days ago. Where? Um, did it in San Francisco and did it in George Lucas's place. Excuse me. Let's just Sk Skywalk. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Skywalk. Whoever he is. Skywalker. Skywalking wretch. And what, what was the project? Was uh, it was it was one song, but it went very 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 well, and it was very exciting. For his project. It's for um, James Lavelle uh, has has a sort of outfit called Uncle. Uh, which Joe Savelle runs, runs this uh, dance label for Mowax. He's an Oxford boy, is He's that? an Oxford boy and a good good friend of ours. Right. So, and um, he, we talked about it for ages and uh, Shadow is sort of a genius, basically, and one of my heroes. So to get to work with him was, was a big kick. Because it's such a visual album. Can I hold up the album? Is it okay? It's up to Thanks. you. Entirely your decision. The back's uh, quite good as well, actually. Thank you. Um, and, um, and uh, just to discover that you had plans to make videos for all of the songs? If we do it, I'd want to do it as we're making the next one. So that it's a long, because that way it's kind of something else to occupy your time. And but when you're touring, it's very difficult because there's different momentums. You're working at different speeds. Um, and, and cash is obviously a big problem. Cash? Cash. We ain't got any. No. But soon, maybe? It's possible and Melvin Bragg wants to. Cash? Did you hear about that? Melvin Bragg wants to give us cash. Really? Yeah. Is cash good? Cash is what we need. Okay. Yeah. But we don't want we don't want we don't want to be advertising products with the cash. We just no. want the cash. Yeah. So and bank it's an robberies. Obscene are... amount of money as well doing these, these Yeah, it costs videos, us millions. You know? It's like you can, for the same price of like a, an expensive video, you could record an entire album. Right. We could all get so, really nice houses in the country. Is that important? Not really, because we've never been them, but you know. <laughs> Would 
Would you like to dispel about one myth about this band? That we don't have any dress sense. And we do. <laughs> How long did you think about your wardrobe before you put it on today? About a week. Good. <laughs> but then, then when the cash comes in... <laughs> Rub it. No, the, the less you think, the better you look. Always, always. We Depend actually on how hungover you are. Yeah, when we, when we started, like, record company said, oh, boys, you need a stylist, and we went... And, <laughs> oh, we and did. We said, no, no, we, went no, out. we, we won't went do out. it. We went out, and we had 300 quid And then they said, yeah, each. we'll have 300 quid 300 each. Pound, 300 pound each yes. to get styled. <laughs> and we went out, and... and <laughs> Phil's still wearing some of it. No, I threw all of mine away immediately. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> so bad. I bought bags and bags and bags of second-hand clothes and we got home and looked at them all. We had three hours to spend 300 quid. It's crazy. What did you buy? I bought this... Well, I was you so confused suit, about you? what I wanted to do. I thought, well, if this ends, I should get a suit so I could be looking sharp for the interview, so the job interview. That's what I told everyone. So I bought myself a suit. <laughs> that creased when you looked at it. Creased when you looked at it. It was horrible. <laughs> I bought it for 300 the quid, and then it was like in a Paul Smith sale in London for like 80 quid about two months later because it was so horrible. And the, so and the, guy, the, guy, in the, the guy in the shop said, oh, well, it creases deliberately. Yeah, of course <laughs> it's it creases on purpose. It's very fast. You know? I, I think maybe cash might not end all of so, the problems here. No, <laughs> no I think, yeah, there are some larger problems. Yeah, there. it is. Yeah. Maybe, maybe some... Uh, Style therapy. Some mental yeah. Style therapy. Yeah. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you for the interview. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, boys. All right. Thanks. Thanks.